Hello everyone, Dom here. Got a little different intro for you today uh, for this episode. I've had great feedback from uh, the people that have messaged me on, on YouTube and on Instagram about the episodes. And a lot of you were really keen on um, when we got Quips to Nerd on and how you really enjoyed uh, talking about painting and, and engaging in the hobby and, and everything we talked about rather than competitive play and, you know, general like new releases of the meta. So what I thought to myself was, you know what, you like painting, do you? All right, I'll bring on the best. So here, here with me today, I have a very special guest. He is from Siege Studios and his name is James Oterio. Hiya, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, man. Yeah, it's, thank you so much for coming on. It's, uh, no, it's an honor to have you on. Yeah, absolute pleasure. It's been a very long time since uh, since we've spoken. Um, so, uh, me and Dom, for anyone who's watching, actually uh, used to go to the same club in St Albans, and uh, and then I got a little email from him, and I was like, I know you. <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah. It's yeah, it's been a long time. So I, weirdly enough, I used to I used to actually follow your band back in the day called Tides of Virtue back oh, then. Long time ago. Uh, <laughs> long time ago. Yeah, it was, a, it was a long time ago, but it was it was really fun. So when I first came to St Albans, um, I was like looking for a club, and uh, St Albans War. Uh, what was it called again? Warlords, Warlords Wargaming. Warlords Wargaming. It, po it popped up on Facebook. It's like a local club, and I was like, finally, I'm not by myself because I started <laughs> like, painting at, at uni. Uh, my old, uh, my old, I think I think it was like my old metal Necrons or something like that. And then I came back from uni. I was like, oh, I need someone to play with. Like my 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 mates don't like Warhammer, so I came came to your club, and it was great. It literally got me hooked to the hobby, um, and it was a great little club, wasn't it? It was. It was good. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was a good, good crowd, good bunch, and uh, yeah, it was really really good. Yeah. So. So I, I gave you a little intro there saying you're from Siege Studios, but can you, before we go into it later in the episode, a bit of a deep dive, can you just sum up what Siege Studios is for us? Yeah, sure. Uh, it, Siege is a, a commission model painting company. Um, so we, we're a premium studio, so we paint, everything we paint is to and above tabletop level as a minimum, essentially. Uh, there's a team of over 60 painters who work for the company, uh, and there's different obviously levels of within the business uh, for painting quality but all of them as mentioned are uh, an above tabletop as a minimum uh, from the, the siege sort of bronze silver gold and platinum levels um we've launched recently warrior workshop which is our sort of brand within the brand which is a tabletop alternative as well so we do offer a tabletop service as well so so yeah that's pretty much what what we what we do and what, what we are yeah and it is insanely good like the the quality of it is is immense and uh, we were just chatting earlier how a long time ago uh, when mini wargaming seemed to be the only channel on uh, on on youtube that used to do battle reports and in their vault they did a um there's a video because you you sent uh, dave a uh, brass scorpion of corn yeah. and it is mentally good <laughs> it's yeah. very 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 good and uh, ever since then i've just been aware of of siege studios um even though i i did knew i did know you from the club yeah. um I was always aware of what you were doing and it's just grown and grown and grown and grown which is absolutely fantastic especially because it's 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 almost like it's something that I, I bet a lot of people aspire to either be part of or like make of their own even if it's like they they paint on twitch the whole time yeah. um, and you've you set up a company where you literally do i don't want to say about your hobby but as a job and <laughs> I know it's, it's 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 for some people it's a dream come true. Yeah, it is. I mean, like you you nailed it there. I mean, like, obviously for us, it, it it is a job. So all the things that there's good and bad with everything, like um, but that with 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 anything that you treat as a job, um, there's, there's always going to be a, the stuff you really enjoy and the stuff that you don't. I I hate for anyone to think that like painting miniatures for a living is like is like there's no negative because obviously sometimes there are projects that maybe you don't like the color scheme or maybe you don't maybe don't like the specific color that you've got to paint but you have to paint it with the same care and attention as a project that you never want to give back to the client so it, it, it had there are other days there are, there are great days there are not so good days it's no different from a normal normal job except for you get to do you do get to do something that you love which is obviously painting so so yeah 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 and i i think it's great uh, but got a question now what yep. actually got you into the hobby? Uh, so it wasn't me. Uh, I, I already was in, I already done like airfix kits, uh, very young. My granddad, I, I, I got me into model planes as a young, as a young boy. And uh, I've been to Duxford loads of times and all these kind of things. 
uh, and and yeah, I got into model aircraft, and then my nan looked after me one weekend. Or I think it was one Saturday or something. Took me down to South End Seafront for the day, like just as you as you do to go see the amusements and everything. Yeah. Um, and went into a charity shop, and there was a bag of, of badly painted face screens and some metal and some <laughs> some that weren't painted and stuff like that. So I found these, and obviously being a young kid, you know, six seven years old, I clung on to it for dear life and was like i'm not letting go of this like so she had to buy it for me so so um so yeah so then i obviously went home uh with that bag and and i, I didn't really know what they were I, was, I wasn't too sure what what it was obviously they just like science fiction kind of like miniatures or whatever um and as a kid i played with like the, the plastic army men in the garden and all that kind of stuff um and yeah, then I found out that it was Warhammer somehow. I don't know. I probably saw Games Workshop as a shop back in Southend, uh, you know, in that area. Um, and and that the rest is kind of kind of history. Like I just, um, you know, I, I painted more, got into painting loads. Um, as a kid, I always used to paint in the back garden with like a long, long blank bit of wallpaper. My mum used to buy me and just six paints. I used to sit there in the garden merrily painting away. Um, uh, and then, yes, yeah, so I've always kind of painted and stuff um and yeah. always enjoyed that creative side and then as you mentioned earlier i had a big gap like everybody does when it comes to this thing you know you know you get you get to a sort of like teen teenage kind of thing you start going out going to gigs or yeah. going out with your friends getting getting drunk in the field all this kind of stuff whatever <laughs> blah blah uh, and warhammer just goes right out the window so you know um uh, so so yeah so that, that's kind of like how I got into it and how it started and how it progressed I had a big gap obviously in music and bands for quite a substantial period of time that all fell to pieces as it always does unless you get signed by Sony or someone um, and then um, and then came back to my childhood bedroom back in Wickford after moving back from St Albans uh, and um, and uh, uh, went into a loft found my Warhammer started it again just <laughs> something to do um and um well i tell you actually I, I was doing warhammer obviously as albans as you know but when i got back to when i moved back to essex from where, where i lived in st albans uh i got all my old stuff back out so i had a few bits and bobs that i bought in the south in st albans games workshop um oh. and then um and then yeah uh started a youtube channel um and just done like little videos of like what i was painting or like a conversion i used to do like um uh, kit bash diaries which were i'd make a model out of loads of bits or convert and stuff put up a video of it blah blah um and that's the yeah, that's kind of like how all of this kind of started was from kind of that point onwards it was uh you know i i, I came back to whitford um you know uh got a job as a as a recruitment consultant which is what i'd always done in and around bands and touring and all this kind of stuff yeah. um i'd like get a maternity cover contract or like a part-time consultant role do that for six months earn enough money go on tour if there was a big tour that we wanted to do i'd quit the job and just go on tour i didn't care like i was like um, <laughs> you know um you yeah, know the, the the virtues of being young i suppose but um but uh yeah and then and then obviously just really really like you said earlier like really got got massively massively into it and um uh and yeah like it just it's, everything subsequently came from that so, oh. so yeah 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 I, I i i kind of get that because it's it's a funny one we always all, all stories kind of start from like oh well, i found it as a kid and didn't really know what it was just used to like it and then when you get a bit of money later in life you're like oh, i just wanna i want i want to go into a games workshop and then you just come out with like a like a, an arm full of like tau or something <laughs> yeah so yeah. Um, apart from um obviously the bag of space marines but what was like your pro what would you consider your your first proper army that's a really good one um uh it would have been the second edition box uh so i got the second edition box as like when i when I was probably going to games workshop i, I bought the second one my, my nan actually my bought again my nan was all my nan's ball uh she bought me <laughs> bought me and bought me a uh, second edition box um, yeah. my, i think it was a split present with my parents or something back in the day or they just wanted to both get me because i was really into it or something um so i me being me what i saw on the box and on the back of the box was what i wanted to to do uh, i always kind of you know um I, i'd like to be able to say that i like blood angels because I just chose them, but I didn't. They kind of chose me. The box, they were there on the box. <laughs> I preferred them to the orcs in the box. So I was like, I'm going to paint those. They're red, yeah. so I'll paint them red. Um, and yeah, that's that's kind of uh, my first army was the second edition starter set. The two tactical marines, uh, yeah, the two squads of tactical marines was the first thing. And then I added like 
the odd metal blister here and there and, and so oh, on. So the metal forth. blisters. I remember them. I forgot they existed. Well they yeah, just like, well, I've got I've got old ones here. Yeah. So like I got really oh, old wow. ones. Look at yeah, yeah. So like um so yeah, like, that's kind of like that's kind of like um my first army was was just a second edition, a core box second edition. Uh, phenomenal box, brilliant, like super iconic now. And um uh yeah it was just a great great start into it the cardboard all oh, dreadnought was great so, <laughs> yes yeah, so, you yeah. know um so but yeah like it, that's 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 how it started and, and that's my first army was, was blood angels from the second ed box so yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. i love orcs they're so funny aren't they i saw yeah. a, saw a picture on them um, on instagram the other day of someone at a tournament absolutely genius I don't know where who he is, or or it might, may have been something that you guys did, but it was it was a it was a, a it was a what was it a Death Dread base, and then it was a wall with a, a, a cardboard cutout of a dreadnought, and it said yeah. not an orc. Yeah, it's like, I've seen that. Yeah, so it's, that, isn't it like it's like it's like the cutout, but it's, it's the cardboard second edition dreadnought, and he's got like yeah, yeah, yeah. Gretchen behind it or something like that. Or yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's really really cool. And, and the thing is is. I suppose because it came in a core box and it's a bit it, it still counts right like i'm guessing it's still it's still like, you can still use it so so yeah. yeah um but yeah no it's uh yeah it's that's 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 the first thing i ever I ever got into i think i left i think i think somewhere either in the loft here or, or in a cupboard somewhere here, i've still got all the orcs unpainted from second head box because i just didn't i didn't paint them like i was like i'm all in on the space marines i'm sorry <laughs> yeah yeah so, oh that's wicked yeah. That's yeah. cool. I wish I kept on to my armies because my first army was um, Space Wolves. And I remember literally dipping a Space space Wolf into uh, the, the uh, what, what, it was not a bad and black back then. It was bad, something, bad and black. Yeah, just straight in. I was like, done. I was like, oh. And then <laughs> it's just called lumpy and horrible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I had orcs. I had... I've gone through all of them, like Orcs, Imperial Guard, which I did with my dad, which was fun. Um, then I went to Tyranids, got an apocalypse-sized Tyranid army. Um, I remember it painful there. Yeah, Orcs Orcs were my favourite, I think, from like because I built two Stompers because we used to do Apocalypse um, with Kevin. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, what he I he had an idea once, which was like, oh, Don, why don't you just do a... Um, like a, a custom stomper and i was like cool all right i'll do that but he he meant like getting warhammer models and ripping them apart and putting them together i literally got a upside down cookie tin and uh stuck plastic card to it and then that was it if it works it's orcs it, it works because it's orcs <laughs> it's amazing oh <laughs> uh, i should i should start an orc army i really should i should just do another one anyway um so what would you say? So you, you, they're like your early years of you getting into the hobby and your your first ever army. Out of yeah. all the armies you've collected over the years, what do you, what do you, what was your favourite army that you like cherish the most? It doesn't have to be the most like like highly painted, or but what was like the one you were just like this is this is my army. This is the one. Yeah, uh, I, I've got an ongoing. I've I've got a Blood Angels army, and I'll always talk about them. Uh, people who know me are sick of me talking about them. I know I'm sorry, but I've got one that literally I started, and I'd always add bits to, add bits to, add bits to, and it's never been finished. Like there's still there's models in there that still don't have the final edges put on them, or there's I just never got around to doing it, and because I was conscious of I want to paint these the best I can at the time, but the problem with that is doing it over so many years as you increase in ability, the army looks really inconsistent. Mm -hmm. So um, so there's that, but I suppose. Uh, so I don't say the same thing always that I always say when I'm asked that question. I'll say my Iron Warriors army. So I, I had a really custom Iron Warriors army that I'd made. I spent loads of time converting all the models, um, had loads of Forge World in it, had loads of bits and bobs. I had, I had an Iron Warriors army, which I absolutely loved. Uh, super broken, loads of Havocs, loads of, <laughs> loads of Decimators with with um, Sol, Sol Verna Petards. Uh, just, just that lethal, just, yeah. Just horrible. Um, uh yeah and i sold it i stupidly sold it so um, no. Yeah. <laughs> because it wanted something different i was like oh, i've played this for so yeah. long like you know and it, and then the moment you like kind of go there you're free now you're in the wild go like it it, it you regret it straight away because you spent so much time instant. on it so it's instant yeah it's, oh. yeah yeah uh, yeah so i i am a big like chaos fan big chaos fan yeah. and 
when when they released a new codex, it was quite underwhelming uh, at, at first read. But then on the on the weekend tournament, this weekend tournament just got on one of our local players. I played up um, me and Stephen Box played him, and we got absolutely hammered by him. And it's the creations of bile. Is it not Tris Whitehead? No, 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 no. no, no. He's be, a great player. He's a great player. I played him many times. Um, but no, um, creations of bile. Have you ever had a creations of bile like custom army at your? Um, no, we haven't. No, it's a really cool idea. It's all of uh, Fabius Biles, like yeah. reads that he's like tinkered with a little bit. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. It seems it's like from what I've heard. I mean, Steve's told me a few bits, like for, for, as in like you know when I've just chatted to him recently about the new decks. Um, like uh, from what I know, it's horrible because we've just done some characters for him, and uh, he was like, "I want Fabius Bile, and I want Bellacore, and I want this." And I was like, "So why, why, why Fabius?" Because I always ask him because obviously. Yeah. He's, he's really good at playing, you know, and I was, it was like, oh, well, you, you can do this, you can do this. I was like, oh, okay, I understand now. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. 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 the whole army fights on death, there's not really much else you need to know. Yeah. Like, it's, it's crazy. It's pretty horrible. Um, so, um, so let's talk a, bit, a little bit about Siege Studios now, because yeah. we've had a little bit, a bit of a hobby talk. Um, so obviously you described like, what you do at the uh, what is Siege Studios, the different the different painting levels and all this sort of stuff. But you've recently just launched the uh, Warrior Workshop. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, sure. So the, as a 10 year old business, we've obviously catered for clients internationally for all the levels that we do. Uh, and obviously, as a premium studio, we always try and paint, as I said, as a, as a minimum, uh, bronze level is an above tabletop, as a minimum stand, it's like a premium gaming. Um, but I but we like I understand totally that not everybody like wants that. Um, and we do always ask like feedback on like when we talk to potential clients and stuff like that, because I want one of the things with Siege is that I, I really want to make sure that we make the business as best as possible for, for clients and for people that come and approach the company. Um, so the feedback we've had, especially with the pandemic and especially with loads of bits and bobs and obviously the way things are at the moment as well, is that um, is that, you know, I want to make the business and brand and the reputation and obviously the quality of service that you get with Siege. I want to make that accessible to more people. It is, it's purely about accessibility. Like, I think that it's all well and good, the levels we've got, and they are great levels, you know, all the way from bronze up to platinum. They're phenomenal in what, what we do, you know, the quality we deliver, but we don't really cater for that market and I think it's a massive shame that we don't and someone who potentially sees the stuff that we produce maybe doesn't necess necessarily need a display level model for what they do um there isn't a, a, a point of purchase within the brand and business for that or there wasn't previous to, to obviously to, to warrior um but warrior is actually something that I've wanted to do for a very very long time so um the idea for it came around sort of 2017 uh, and and because of the growth of Siege and because obviously how busy I've been and on top of that as well um, I had other commitments outside of Siege I had another business that I was part of at that time uh, I, I, I just I, I just didn't it was put on the back burner um, and with anything that we do uh, anyone who knows me knows I really want to get it done and get it done now and, and for something like that it needed loads of planning and couldn't be rushed um, so I didn't feel and from obviously from speaking to team members in the office and having a chat like group discussions about it like doing it back then wouldn't have made logical sense um so when it came to a period of time when we were like right i really want to you know this thing's been sitting on the back burner the the, the branding's there the name's there the idea for the, the, the for, for the product is there uh, it came to a point where it was like the next thing on the list and it just worked out that we just you know spent loads of time developing it doing loads of market research talking to potential clients talking to, to the clients you know uh, and, and then on top of that, obviously developing what what the level is, um, because it's a real interesting thing. Like we didn't want to. Number one, one of the big things is I don't want to do something which uh, it de which devalues the quality we offer with the levels that we have. But at the same time, on its own, it needs to be a very good level in itself because then with the, for the brand it needs to have that same level of quality uh, yeah. or expectation of quality um just because you're getting something done at warrior doesn't mean you're not getting something still for premium if that makes sense you know um yeah uh, so so stylistically it's very very different to what we do with bronze silver gold platinum so bronze silver gold platinum is very box art uh, when i started siege over 10 years ago only 10 years ago in february this next year um uh 
it, we deliver we, we paint the box art style so i grew up what, painting you know emulating what's on the box and that's when i started siege on my own that's kind of the, the style that, that that siege started with and it's grown from there and obviously those are the team members that are on board paint or i say a good very a high proportion of them painting that style um but with warrior we wanted to, to kind of do something very different so it stands out as a product in the brand so obviously the stylistic approach to it is very airbrush it's very very different um and yeah. the benefit benefit of that is it from a from a time intensity and time sync process of doing that it's way less than what goes into to, to bronze and then what you're doing is in your essentially you know with us you can if you like it in a more of an airbrushy style there's also a product there for you whereas you know as again talking back about accessibility someone who maybe doesn't like the box art style wouldn't choose us as a business because because we we, we don't offer visually it doesn't look like we offer that even though if you took a commission out with us and you said look i want it painted like this and there's a reference photo there's no reason why we wouldn't paint it to that but we'd still apply our qualities of uh, levels of quality to what that is that you want mm. um, so i think visually having something on the website and something as part of the brand which someone can look at and go that's what i want that's what i prefer i like that. i understand that style and i see that on the box all the time however i prefer more airbrushy style it's great for them because then they have that point, point of purchase within the business. And then also, look, I'll always be black and white on all cards on the table. Um, budget wise as well, Warrior is is different to obviously uh, is different to, to bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. Um, you know, it's 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 we wanted to create a, a tabletop alternative to the levels we offer, but still have a tabletop level which you can look at and be. I'm really proud to have that on the table. Or even if you want to have it in the cabinet, have it in the cabinet as well, and it will still look it will still look decent. You know, and, that, and that's that's one of the things that are the one of the core things when it came to Warrior that we had to deliver was something that stylistically is different. It's more affordable, and also second, and also thirdly, it, you know, it, it 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 gives someone the opportunity to purchase with my business and brand. You know, so so yeah, yeah, I I totally get it as well because like I've I've had models like commissioned just by friends here, like during lockdown, and it it was because I wanted I wanted to have models painted. I just simply didn't have the time. Yeah, so for me it was it, for me it was more like a like oh I I need these done because yeah. X Y Z. I don't have time here we go yeah. and I, I, as you were speaking I was just looking at all of your different um your different you know like uh, warrior bronze silver gold platinum yeah. and I really like the warrior the style the like the airbrush style for me like like you're saying like for me is actually how I like my models yeah like and a lot of people uh, I, I would I would think would would look at that and go yeah that's that's the sort of thing I like because uh, yeah yeah. on the on the website you, like you guys can't see what i'm looking at but um there straight away there's a um redemptor dreadnought and it just pops because of the way they've done the airbrush fades and then on top and then they've even got like as you scroll down the page it's like here's a space marine here's it clean and if you want it weathered here's it weathered here's the yeah. difference and yeah. exact same model uh and it's just like if you want it clean great it looks totally different to if it looks weathered so yeah, it's it's really cool actually seeing seeing all of these different levels of of painting, but it's not like you're just dumbing down your your abilities and your artist abilities because yeah. the abilities on it, like the tiny minute scratches, the precision yeah. the airbrushes, it really it really is like an elite level, and like it, I I, I think you sold yourself short there by saying by saying. Um, uh, we said about the work because it is insanely good quality like that riptide pops <laughs> like that the, what is it it's not the riptide it's the um right, storm, surge, storm surge storm surge yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a big old red storm surge on it and that looks so good yeah cheers dude like uh, like yeah. uh, and that's the thing like uh, also the thing with warrior is slightly different so with 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 uh, bronze silver gold and platinum like everything as, a, as an option is like uh is is bolted on so obviously painting is mandatory with us as a business you have to have models painted we're a commission yeah. business that's what we do um with all with with bronze to platinum you can add on magnetizing freehand you know the basin you can do if you don't want to do the us do the basin you can just we can just paint them black and then you can put your basin material on there, all those kind of things um with warrior what you tried to do and again it's about accessibility like warrior gives the opportunity for, for so so building and cleaning uh transfers and 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 uh and uh basing are included within the price so that's so good. If, if you want to add magnetizing that is an additional thing because obviously you know um 
it has more work has to go into obviously doing the magnetizing and then obviously the painting of all the magnetized parts um same same with things like for example freehand you can still add freehand onto it if you wish but the core thing of the product is that you know you're building your cleaning your painting your transfers and your basing uh, are, are all in the price you know and that's one of the things i think it gives you it is that you know the, the the whole thing about the brand within the brand is that you know or, or the branch of the company is that you know it, it is painted for battle so when you get it if you if you go with all the options that come with it you can literally go i'm gonna play a game and that's, that's awesome uh, and that's one of the key things so so yeah yeah that's great that's really good and i'm looking at your services now and you do building and cleaning as well which is yeah. which you can obviously is like a bolt on you can have like special converting and sculpts what's been your favorite conversion that you you guys have done See, I'm really biased on this one, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> yeah, I always put the caveat there. People, I'm sorry if people get sick of, of me saying blood angels, but um, so, so we we've done conversion and, and like the minor sculpting as a business for quite some time prior to the launch of of custom service and and, and custom services again, it's within the family of brands at Siege. Uh, so custom service is a uh, is a unique one-off character creation brand so if you've got a favorite character that you want to, to to bring to life then 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 we can we can do that for you um it'll be a one of one piece it's certificated it's signed by the sculptor the painter the business so you've got a truly unique one-off collector's piece um so when we launched that i straight away went i want to prime iris dente um <laughs> and, and and uh and and we launched the, we launched it with five uh models just to launch custom service or cs uh, and he was one of them and, and yeah like for me it was bringing everything to life that I'm passionate about in one character and one model and all the little nuances of things that I wish, you know, you would see on one, if Games Workshop ever do make one or if they don't and kill yeah. them off or whatever, blah, blah. Like, it's just something that I wanted from, wanted to, and, it, and used it as one of the, one of the things to launch the brand as well. So, so yeah, um, that's my favorite thing. Um, other than that, um, that, that I would probably say one of the team, we done a really cool Ragnar Blackmane that's actually on the website. Uh, it's a firstborn Ragnar Blackmane. And I think that the, the client for that piece, they, they really wanted, uh, like the Ragnar Blackmane model, uh, it's super iconic the, the sec, from the second head, incredible miniature, yeah. like, uh, you know, phenomenal sculpt, really iconic. I, I still think even with all the Primaris version, still holds a special place in, in many people's hearts because of how, how cool that model is and, and, and what it is. Yeah. Um, but they just wanted that client wanted one that was like charging, looking really aggressive, really feral. And that that piece was kind of like one of the precursors to, to customer service. It was one of the ones where we were like, right, we're going to really get the client wants to do this. We're going to really crazy on it and see what we can do. And then it was kind of with that we we're like, this this could be something that yeah. loads, of, loads of people want. And um, and it, yeah. And then from that, we done quite a few convert custom characters. Yeah. But we didn't call it anything. We just we went, oh, here's like a, a Scottish Space Marine captain, or like you know, like there's a, there's a, like, like a Braveheart style captain. That was, no, yeah. yeah, that's cool. Some, yeah, there's some really cool things. So yeah, um, but yeah, that that for me personally, I think those two, like my personal Dante, and then uh, and then the the the, the first born Ragnar Blackmane that's on the website is a really really is a really cool model that we, I'm super proud that we created for the client. So yeah. Yeah, that's they they look amazing. Honestly, like if you're watching this and you and you want to check these out, just go on seedstudios.com and go to .co.uk and oh, go to the uh, converting and sculpting under services. And if you go to the bottom, the Scottish uh, space marine captain, he he's wearing a kilt. It's <laughs> amazing. And then Ragnar just looks insane. Like you can see those scars in his face. Yeah, it's yeah. really, really well detailed. That is. They were all put on, so that was that was like a head that we then added sculpting onto to create yeah. that that really sort of you know um, rough ragged style that the client wanted. Um, you know, um, but yeah, yeah. So that, that, I'd probably say those two for me personally. That I'm just looking at that Ragnar now. Like he he looks like he's he could be in like like a like the front cover of a um like a like a book or anything or something like that or a codex like the detail on that is incredible it really... that's, that's one of the things we try to do like, like we, one thing we're really passionate about on, on anything we do on, on that side of the brand and business is that we create you something that not only epitomizes the character that you want um we have a lot of we have a lot of clients that go i love this bit of artwork there's no model for it um and we'll, we'll make a one-off of that that of that of that, of that model basically for them um you know um or some some clients will go i've been reading this this book and it's got this character in it and i don't think they're ever going to make a model for him and yeah. um, you know or her and and and, and I, I i 
can you make it for me? And we're like, well, yeah, that's, that's, that's that sounds awesome. You know, the, I think yeah. my, favorite, my favorite ones, other than the ones I'm slightly, the, the one I'm slightly biased to, are the ones that literally we, you'd never, it, it's not something that you'd probably ever see. It's just something that someone's gone, uh, this, is my, this is my chapter, or this is my Imperial Guard regiment, or this is my assassin, that I, you know, and I want him to be doing this, or this is my rogue trader. Or like, that, there's just these awesome ideas. And, and I think one of the real virtues of doing what we do on the custom service side of the business is that we get to bring people's, like imagination to life like you know we, we get to bring people's literally take the idea that they've had or their, their thing that they've, they've dreamt of or, or, or thought of and just go boom there it is and, and, that, and that for me is the most, i think one of the most satisfying things is seeing people's reactions when they first see them off you know um yeah it's just yeah it's really enjoyable yeah i can imagine that because it's like as, as you were talking then uh i was just imagining like if i were to ask for a character and send ask for i'd probably go for Drazar, yes. but I would want his new, like, new head and all, all that. But I like the old pose where he's like daintily running around. I love the double, the double. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. And again, like, I'm I'm 36, so I I remember a lot of a lot of old models and stuff. And and I love all the new stuff. Don't get me wrong. Like, I love yeah. all the new range and all the new models and everything. I'm a huge GW fanboy. But like, but the the I love old miniatures and when we get to do them like we've recently just completed uh you'll, you'll probably see it and you know if you if you're watching this it's probably might be on socials already when you see this but if not um we 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 just recently done a Praetorian Iron Guard army and and for me that was like incredible to work on such old models but they have obviously that rarity to them as well and to paint them to a decent standard and, and you know and have them really really you know painted well is is, is just something beautiful to have you know to, to bring to life so so yeah it's just really really that's when i'm saying one of the fun parts of the job that's one of the fun parts of it is just doing that kind of thing for people you know um so yeah that is cool um so moving on um Tell us, a, tell us a bit more about uh, the different services you do at Sea Like, do you ever do like workshops or or have like a, almost like a, a painting coaching sessions? Yeah, we do. Um, there's various arms to the brand, the business. Like, I, 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 I've always wanted to do as much as I can as a business within the industry. Um, obviously, commissions is the, the main thing we do and the thing we've been known for doing for, for the longest period of time. Uh, teaching is something that started probably two, two or three years into the brand of business. So I actually started Siege in 2013. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't a registered business until 2014 so I, it's always kind of got like two birthdays like <laughs> yeah, we essentially we essentially will be 10 years old in february but as, as a registered vat paying company uh, or as a registered company in england is 2014 so two years into doing the, the, the business i was like that i really would love to teach I've, i you know i used to enjoy sitting around the table with my mates when i was younger just like helping them and or, or, or painting bits with them and then ask, they'd ask me something or I, i'd ask them and i really enjoyed that 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 kind of side of things so as, as we grew as a business i thought all oh, look i'm going to see if anyone would be interested in, in doing you know uh, classes or learning us and, and surprisingly yeah. the uptake was quite quite good so i was like right okay it's definitely got a viability to do this as a part of siege as, as that and it's kind of grown from there um you know so we've, we've always run classes for the last sort of six seven years um, I think it might be a bit longer. I don't know. I've, I've been so long now, but I think it's about six, six, seven years we've been teaching. Um, and then a couple of years into into that teaching, obviously the rise of Patreon came along. And one of my, I, I've got this thing in the business where I love, you know, I love people to add value to the company that, and go, you know, this is my idea. I sat down and we had a conversation about it. This is how, is, this is why it's viable. Let's let's try and see if we can make this work and giving people the opportunity to have ownership of things that they've brought to the table and the company's gone, yeah, let's stick a rocket booster to it and do it. Um, one of the team was like, look, Patreon's really popular or getting really popular. Uh, it's a good platform to teach people that maybe can't come to one of the physical classes. It's online, we do PDFs, we do videos. So then that launched and that we, we sort of, uh, that I ran with that idea from one of the team and you know that's grown obviously to where it is now, is a, a decent decent thing you know uh having having hundreds of people learning through there is, in, is incredible to be able to say yeah. um uh, and then on top of that as well we've started doing what i like, like individual hourly sessions and then weekend sessions with the individual individual painters and like clients and that kind of stuff so that's they've got like a personal tuition side of it that's come from there um uh, we, we, we're dabbling with different things like seminars uh, and, and there's loads there's loads of things that we want to do we've actually just put some new courses up and actually launched some new some new sort of classes that we've launched recently for the end of this oh, year cool. um so so yeah there's the teaching side of the business there's obviously the commission side of the business um 
we, we we obviously do events we go to different events like conventions and things like that um because i'm all about I, I like i like there's nothing better than putting what you do in front of people no photoshop no none of that stuff and people and going this is us this is what we do here's the quality you know um i think you can't you can't really argue with that like if it's in hand and if you see it in, yeah. flat, in front of you you can't um and, and just to say like we don't doctor or do anything crazy with our photos of the miniatures they're just well lit really really decent photos of the, of the miniatures um i think the moment you start putting that technological side into it you devalue the effort and time and work that's been invested into it um you know and and for me that's you know that doing conventions is also another another outlet for that you can have someone come to stand have a really good engaging conversation with them whether they're a client or not they go away seeing what you do and having a great conversation you know about the thing that everybody loves you know um so so we've got the convention side of things that we do um and and yeah there's other things in the works that we're doing as a brand that i can't really talk about but um there's siege as a business i've always i've, I've always wanted to, to to go into different areas and grow into different oh, things yeah. with it because um the industry is in a really good position um we're young as an industry like commercially and i say this with everyone i talk to like it's really interesting how our industry is actually quite far behind a lot of other industries like lots of things that, that are commonplace in those industries don't exist in the wargaming or miniatures industry um and, and we had a conversation about this as well so so like uh, you know it it there's loads of things that we're going to do as a brand and as a company and and um and yeah just watch your space because there's loads coming so yeah watch this space indeed like so see see studios um you, you said you mentioned conventions is, is there going to be anything uh lgt this year are you popping down it's it's golden demon that weekend so unfortunately i won't be there oh, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah I, I was very fortunate uh to get uh, a ticket to golden demon and um I, I, like painting i always think that that arena is a really good place to push yourself and test yourself and you grow the most as a painter when you are in the mindset of i've got to paint the neatest sharpest best i can um so any painting competition is obviously good for that but gd obviously is is this thing that you know has been around for many many years 35 years and um and, and you know uh yeah it's something that i enjoy doing i like focusing my attention and time on one piece or a couple of pieces and then you know even if i don't i'm not looking to win i'm just looking to enter and push myself the virtue and benefit is having something that you painted the best you can at that moment in time um you know and if you get if you get something off the back of it that's that's incredible that's brilliant you know and, and it doesn't you know it's not the i don't want to devalue the winnings because it's because it is important and it is something that you should aspire to and push yourself to but at the same time i think remaining humble and being like you know i've entered i've done the best i can once it's in the cabinet there's nothing more i can do and if three people turn up that are better than me or have painted something that factually is better than me and i've don't place then you can't argue with that you know so so um so yeah i, I think that's, that's 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 something that i enjoy but no lgt i you know i i think steve is going i think he's doing a class or something there um i would because he's down in london i would have loved to have gone we obviously were quite close so um so i'd love to i'd love to obviously hang out and stuff but no i'm i'm, I'm up in nottingham for that weekend um but we do like salute um uh, in the uk we obviously go to salute um uh, obviously uk games expo we have a stand at and um and in adepticon in the states so we do, we do oh Adepticon. Yeah. oh wicked. Um, so yeah um which is which is great you know so it's always good to go across the pond and see and see you know and see obviously the conventions over there because they're, they're huge you know um so so yeah um so that's that that's the convention side oh cool so probably probably people um are wondering but what do you actually do at siege studios what is your role right now <sighs> we, I don't, I don't know on, uh, like, it's, it's changed over time like i've i've i when i started uh obviously it was 360 so i was doing literally everything um and uh i did it for a long time um so i i didn't just jump in and do siege permanently off off from the get-go uh, i obviously as i mentioned i worked in recruitment for for 11 or so years around bands and stuff and spilled two or two of those years spilled into the beginning of siege um so I was working sort of 60 hour week doing recruitment, coming home every night, cooking dinner, doing emails for Siege at the same time, lunch break at work, doing emails for Siege, getting up in the morning before work, early, doing emails for Siege, photos, photography, like, you know, emails, media, like all, all the stuff, you know, and this is before we had like a, a vast team, probably like, uh, probably like five, six painters in the early days. Um, and it's hard you know like it's, it's, yeah. it's and i'm not trying to go for the sympathy card or vote here but like being frank like it it, it it is hard like you know um and and um 
and yeah, just, just put in loads and loads and loads and loads of hours and made loads of sacrifices with different bits and bobs of life. Um, you know, I won't bore you or go into too much detail, but loads of loads of sacrifices and yeah. personal circumstances. Um and uh and then yeah, like I said, then my role was changed. And the problem is I'm very hands-on. So like I like to be involved because I, I don't want it's a it's a it's a birth product of my recruitment days i used to walk into so many companies where the owners of companies went in at three o'clock in the afternoon and went home at four o'clock in the afternoon and didn't know how to use the printer or didn't know how to use this and 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 i i don't like being that way um my dad brought me up to be a grafter and to work hard and to yeah. and to, and to not you know and to not so to, to sort of not just expect things you know uh, just because you have people working for you or whatever um but the problem with that is then I I dilute what I need to do in the business and what I needed to do has changed massively since it started. There's loads of things now that, that I need to be doing as the owner of the company that, quite frankly, I shouldn't. And it's, I hate saying it because it, I don't I, not, I don't think that anything is beneath me in the company. If you want me to clean the toilet, I'll do it. I don't care. Like, <laughs> um, yeah. uh, but at the same time, like if you've got somebody in the company that's role is to do various different things, maybe like uh, pack models or, for example, you know, um, for, do the photography, do the media, do you know that side of things. Then, then my time is spent better doing the other things for the business and for the brand that I need to be doing to help all of that, as well as that's yeah. helping me. If that makes sense. So, letting go of stuff has been really difficult. So, so now my role pretty much is working on new things that we're doing as a business. Um, uh, dealing with clients, so I do I do a lot of a lot of client interaction. I've never really sort of not done that purely because that's what I used to do for eleven years in recruitment, and and it feels strange to me to not deal with clients and have that side of it. Um, uh, as and when, obviously, as a small business, you have to roll your sleeves up and do cover when people are on holiday and all that kind of stuff. So I still get to do a lot of the things I've done even in the early days. Now, like I still, you know, if if someone from from packing from from post the postal room is is not there, then I'll I'll go down and I'll I'll pack something and send it. You know, I'm not I'm not that doesn't bother me. You know, like I, I'd rather be doing that because it still contributes to the greater good of the business using a towel yeah. pump. But um, <laughs> but uh, but and that's kind of like my role now is really sort of like growth of the business building the company from where it is um dealing with clients 360 um talking to clients all the time talking to clients about their specs and projects like i love doing that it's one of my favorite things because i get to have really engaging super fun conversations about these awesome ideas whether it's an army a small project a character custom character their first project with the business you know like all these things i enjoy doing and um, so my role mainly focuses around that like i split between client management and client interaction building the company obviously all the staff in the office uh and and most importantly as well is i i try and stay in touch as much as possible with the team because yeah. i'm not just the owner of the company i started this being the painter i don't ever want to be separated from that um you know i still do the odd bit here and there when needed because i like to be on the tools still i'm not a, i'm not a non-time served owner if that makes sense yeah yeah. Um, yeah, but obviously with the company where it is now and having the amount of painters we have on board, having the amount of people depending on the business, it's very hard for me to to to, to be shotgunning around all the different things that I used to do that, quite yeah. frankly, I've, I've got people that work for the company that, that are paid to do that. I, I shouldn't be going. I'm more of a, of a, of a burden, being frank. Like, <laughs> loads of procedures and things have obviously grown as we've got bigger as a company and, and like me being me, like, I'm not sometimes I'll be like I'll 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 be like back in the past you know what I mean and it's it's not it's not the it's not the best situation so I try and stay to the things that I'm supposed to be doing now because yeah yeah at the moment I start doing things that I doing things that I used to do that I've not been doing for six months or 12 months or three years that's when stuff goes wrong and I don't like to be, make things go wrong so, <laughs> so, so yeah. yeah um so yeah Oh yeah, you don't want to fall in that trap and start start talking about blood angels again. Anyway, uh, I, won't, I, won't, I, won't, I won't mention them one more time unless you've got a question prompting me. <laughs> well, these these questions are all about painting, so maybe I'll stick so, clear. Uh, I promise you. I'll stick yeah. Clear. So this is a little painting section. So in, in yeah. my in my normal videos, I have a meta section, but I don't want to talk about meta. I'm bored of talking about the meta. I want to talk about something interesting, which is actually painting, because I am not great at it. I do try. I try a lot but like i just I, I don't know why it just doesn't look as as great as i imagine it, it's gonna look before i put put paint to paint to model but what i have noticed is that my air, using an airbrush 
uh, it's just up my game completely. Like before, like using a brush, it just didn't work. But airbrushing, I can have so much more control about what it is. Maybe I'm more mechanical. I'm not. That, I don't know. No, but sure. um, how? Just how did you st- like make the first leap in your um, in like your level of painting? Like when you actually like broke through like the surface of the water or whatever. Yeah, no, it's a really good way of putting it. Um, I think. <laughs> First things first, like I think a good uh, uh, when it comes to painting, um, planning stuff is really important, and I think a lot of people don't think about that. We get super excited that we've got this brand new model, and like, yeah, I want to I want to paint this blah, blah blah. And don't get me wrong, I've been there, I've done it a thousand times. I still do it now when I get a, a new model or whatever. Um, but I think that spending five minutes or ten minutes, make yourself a cup of tea, and I, I advise those people to get like a painting journal or a book uh, that they can write stuff in and plan a p- project on a page, whether it's a character, an army, or whatever plan it because a lot of the decisions and choices that you make when it comes to actually painting it are normally done on the spot while you're doing the thing yeah Um, and sometimes we all sometimes we don't make the best choices there in the moment and you you, the amount of times where i've looked at a model and been like i chose that color while i was painting it but if i have just thought right what color do i want to do i want to paint the robes and then look at the paints i've got and go i think that would be good that would be good that would be good that would be but i think this one's best where the other color is going to go there that couple of seconds of thought pre actually executing it is so much more invaluable than just getting a color and putting it on obviously if you're using something just as a trial piece just to just to play with colors and play with paint and that's totally fair but if you're repainting this model that you've waited six months for to be released and you get it and you're like i want to get it on the table making a cup of tea getting your journal out going right main color this metallics i'm going to use this paint black i'm going to use this paint uh the base I'm going to do this spacing thing. The toughs I'm going to use are this. That five ten minutes of prep, it's like anything. Like you wouldn't go into a gym and pick up the biggest dumbbells straight away and just <laughs> do repetitions. You wouldn't get in a car if you didn't have a driving license and try and drive it. So why would you pick up a miniature bit and just just run with it? Unless you, if you're you, if you're painting it in the realms of experimentation, then that's totally understandable and you don't need to worry about planning. But if it's something that you really care about that you really want to just paint to the best of your ability spend the value that time invest that time which is something that you don't get any more of not trying to be too morbid or too deep but get get that time at five ten minutes and just write on that page and go right these are the colors i'm thinking of using you might get to that color and then go i'm actually going to switch but at least you've got a starting point that's then made you prompt and think about that when it comes to it i think lots of you know there's that really famous analogy that you know uh, fail, uh, fail to prepare prepare to fail and i think that's one of the things that a lot of people do struggle with like um the other thing is, is something that I, I on our classes that i say to people as well is um that there's i don't want to use the, i have to use the word fear because i use it as an acronym an acronym so it's false expectations appearing real so your false expectations of what's going to happen or what you're going to do becoming reality is sometimes the biggest hindrance to you um what you have to understand is that your comfort zone and painting within your comfort zone is your enemy if you don't push yourself outside of it by using colors that you never used before by painting different shapes that you never painted before by painting miniatures that you never painted before like you're not going to grow as a painter so for, for me, in answer to your question, in a long-winded answer, and I'm sorry to chew your ear off, but it's something <laughs> I'm really passionate about is that I think that in some, spending some time to plan what you're going to do yeah. and also pushing yourself outside your comfort zone and engaging in stuff that does, does give you fear, and I mean that as false expectations appearing real, I think when you start doing that, you start growing massively as a painter because you start focusing and you start experimenting but with with without that worry the worst thing that's going to happen if you experiment is that you have to strip the model you know that's the worst thing and and now there's plenty of products that you can strip models really well and the model's perfectly fine to then repaint afterwards so remove that fear again in in speech marks remove that and plan what you do if you care about it i think the two things i think they're they're the they're the the, the two things i'd say to, to anybody who's looking to get a vast sort of break the water kind of growth in their painting yeah that's a really good answer actually because just like slowing down and like i said take having a tea or a coffee and just sitting there and just going right how am i actually going to do this it makes a lot more sense because i i uh recently just poo pooed all over my uh great and clean one with some dodgy airbrush paint that i had and i was like oh god damn it and the whole i i, I basically painted it in the wrong light 
it wasn't like bright light it was kind of like like an orange dingy light and i was airbrushing under it and then uh next day came to my painting desk turned the lights on opened the curtains it was a completely different color to what i thought it actually was and i was like oh this looks hideous this looks <laughs> awful <laughs> i'd used like warp lightning green but i thought it was like really dark green opened it up and it was like shiny um yeah so yeah, I that's great advice, and I will I will definitely take that on board because my grunt and clean one is currently crying because he looks so ugly. <laughs> it's Nurgle, like at the end of the day, like yeah, they can be all different colours, so it's not the end of the world. Yeah, exactly. Um, so what's been your favourite model of, of recent that you've that you worked on for your own hobby, not for work or anything like that? What have you just sat down, and take some time, and gone? Oh, I'd love this. I've got it here, actually. Uh, it's uh, it's a really old metal Inquisitor. Um, so oh. uh, yeah, it's a really really old old metal Inquisitor model. Uh, it's like oh. it's, it's uh, I, can't, I can't remember the chap's name. It's Gideon Locke. That's it. Oh, sorry, Gideon. No, Gideon Law. I think his name is. Um, yeah, I, I, I again, I really like uh, a lot of the old old models. Uh, and for me, there's just a, a real sort of uh, nostalgia to them of my childhood. And like, yeah. and, and the thing is, is, I used to murder models when I was a kid. I used to paint them so badly. So. I, I want to kind of revisit ones that I love the sculpt or love the miniature, but never done it justice or, or what I yeah. thought was justice, you know, and, uh, you know, and so I've been painting that off and on. It was supposed to be for our internal sort of company painting competition for the team, but uh, I, I had to tap out just because I've had, I've been so busy and there's been some other stuff happening in life that I just, it's kept me busy. Um, but, um, but yeah, so I've been painting that. It's, it's, it's I, I love the model. It's such a cool pose and it's got such a loads of little, really intricate little details and things that are fun to paint. Um, it's my, it's, it's, you know, so it's just a real fun piece to just work on and to tweak on. I'm working on a, on a client project at the minute. So I've got a, a client that's been with the business for a very, very long time. And, um, uh, they always said if I ever get this model done, I'd love you to do it. So I've, I've had to, I've got that to do. So I've got that. I can't show it to you cause it's not been, it's one that we've not previewed yet. Um, uh but um and obviously it's a client piece so i don't really want to put it on a live stream oh, and it's not oh. done yet but um <laughs> i've got something sitting in front of me that i'm working on for golden demon as well so there's a few there's a few things on 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 the table um but again I just yeah i, I don't one of the one of the i suppose if you're going to say one of the negatives of, of being so busy and, and doing what we do and what doing what i do is that you know um, before you take even real life into consideration, my, my partner e or or recently getting a puppy or whatever, like um, you you just you don't get to paint as much as you for yourself as you yeah. used to, which which is frustrating. But I think I I value when I do get a chance to paint myself way more now, and I try and be as efficient as I can in that time frame because I don't get as much of it as I used to. So so yeah, um, but that Gideon Gideon Law is the or is it? I can't remember if it's Lock or Law. I think it's Law. Um, is the is the Gideon Inquisitor that I'm painting just as a fun sort of like trying to paint it really nicely uh, for myself just to stick in the cabinet. So yeah, yeah, that's quality. Like uh, there's something about those old metal models that are very they're just they're just different, you know, because the the new the newer the newer games version releases like don't get me wrong, but like the sculpts and some of them are insane, but on some of them they're very cartoony rather yeah. than um kind of like box art that we used to have um uh so yeah it's 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 it's, it's nice to see like old old like metal models get still getting some use um but out of all the kits that you've assembled and worked on what's been the worst <laughs> i it, 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 when you say worst did like what, what do you mean by worst as in just to put together or do you mean just like a kit that that is like difficult to paint or what, 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 what? Uh, well i'll give you an example so the other day i got a dread claw drop pod and i got all the bits out in front of me i was thinking it was going to be one wing two wing three wing four wing and then the engine pops on it was in about 200 bits and i just looked at it and i just messaged my friend straight away and just went do you want this drop pod because <laughs> i was not assembling that I think yeah, like four four drug kits, they're, they're phenomenal. I think one of the things is the material, re the resin. You know, it 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 it's not like a plastic kit whereby you get a sprue out of a box. And yeah. I'd say ninety point nine point nine 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 percent of the time, it's it's bang on. There's you know, it, you can't. It's nothing's ever one hundred percent. There's always going to be one spanner in the work somewhere or, or a pouch will have fallen off a sprue when they've been put in the box or whatever you know, it happens um i think resin is, is just because of the nature of the material like there is obviously a, a, an inconsistency which unfortunately nobody can nobody can sort of like uh 100 uh, you know, guarantee um 
I think you're along, you're on the right lines. I think for me personally, and especially this is just from the early days of Siege, I think there was a period of time, a year or so, I think it was when the Fire Raptor came out. Um, the Fire Raptor as a kit is just, is just, it's some real graft. It's, you know, as a kit, yeah. um, I think I went through eight or nine of them I built for, for clients back in the day. <laughs> and, and there's the sides, because they've got the ball turrets on the sides, um, that the, the the bridge that that, can, that has the front to the back is just it's very thin because of the because of the what it is um, and that's nothing against the design or the, or the model but it's just obviously to have that really cool ball turret on the side you've got to have those thin bits of resin um, and when they come when it comes in the bag it comes obviously with a bit of cardboard and cell and uh, rubber bands to hold it straight so obviously it comes out the mold it's it's like a wobbly sausage but it's drawer it's cool it's cool it's, cool, it's, cool, it's cooling down they put obviously in cardboard and put elastic bands on. You're always going to get a little bit of warpage it, it just happens with any resin kit you know it doesn't matter if the manufacturer you know it, it always happens um and uh and yeah just the fire app it's a bit of a it's a real you need, really need to roll your sleeves up grab as many files and pins and, and things as possible and just get that thing together and hair dry the living hell out of it um <laughs> there was a there was a there was a uh, you know I, I never forget the only thing and it's along the lines of what you said the only thing that um has been worse in my opinion it's, it's not the current one, as in the new one, um, which has been out for quite some time now anyway, but um, the very old Dreadnought drop pod. Um, there was, there was, I, I, I don't know if I've got the photo still, but I, I remember when we used to use WhatsApp as a business, I put it in the Siege group because I was like, I've got to take a photo of this because no one's going to believe me. I couldn't get one of the doors to close properly and, and it what if i filed it smooth i'd done everything i can to try and get it to seal properly and then what it was was the the the, the, the actual round bit at the bottom the whole thing was slightly slightly oh, oh. like this so obviously when it opens it closes at one angle opens at another because obviously the, the slight thing and obviously i glued it in so i was like i it was free moving but obviously i couldn't take the piece out i was like i don't know what i'm going to do um so i put it in the oven and um and uh, I put it on. I put it in the oven for a couple of minutes at like fifty or whatever degrees, and managed to hot heat the whole thing oh, of it as a joke because I was like, no one's going to be able to do this. And I managed to bend the thing in place and literally hold it in place with oven gloves or little, some gloves and a, like a dish cloth just so I didn't burn my fingers or anything. And I managed to get it into 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 being as straight as physically possible, being fixed on the model. Um, <laughs> but there's this picture circulating somewhere in the Siege social media, wherever, from yeah. the past, this dreadnought drop pod in the oven because it was just, I couldn't, I, I just couldn't. And I'm not condoning anybody put their resin models in the oven because anything that made <laughs> my fault. But, um, but yeah, but I, I had to do that because it was just, uh, it was just ludicrous, honestly. So, so yeah, um, so that's probably the most difficult model I've ever had to build. <laughs> that was the best story I've ever heard of a, of a, of a model. That's so funny. Oh, that's, that is a classic. That is, I like that. Um, so talking about, I was talking about airbrushes earlier and we were talking yeah. about how um, your, your new warrior um service you you talked about the airbrushing as well um what what are some good like beginner airbrush paints i think you can't go wrong with any of like the vallejo model air range so either game air or, or or the the just the model air range i think they're both really good i've always liked vallejo as, as a, as a yeah. i think they're you know uh the selection of color short cues and tones and choices is is, is i think well, i wouldn't say unrivaled as much now it used to be a lot more unrivaled because they just had such a broad range of colors um but also for for immediately being able to put it in the airbrush and just use it straight away um it, it's it's really good and uh and yeah i'd i'd uh, i'd always recommend vallejo paints i think they're good you can't go wrong with uh, a, a, a couple of their sets that they do they do some sets of the paints as well which are really good um they're great paints to just get and get your airbrush and with a bit of paper practice getting the control um which, which is really important um but yeah vallejo are really good uh there are a couple of other airbrush uh, compatible paint ranges out there um but I, yeah, I, I always advocate as Vallejo as you're like you're stable. We're really, really good for for, for just practicing with the airbrush when you're just starting out. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. I really like Vallejo as well. When I first first started using my airbrush, that is the first paint I got because that's all my friend was painting with, and I was like, well, they must be good, so I'll get them, and they were great. Yeah. They were really, yeah. really good. Um, yeah. Have you have you tried to do contrast paints through an airbrush yet? 
yeah i did um so oh, i've got a piece here actually uh so um so we you, you we mentioned earlier when we were just chatting about obviously the video we done on our youtube and we, we unfortunately tried out some of the contrast paints for games workshop and we, we've done a video on our youtube channel um but i use like the bad and yellow through through the airbrush and it's just like it's i don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this but yeah. it's it's unbelievable like it's just it's just so good it's so vibrant so punchy yeah. it's, you know super saturated in the in the tone you know um they're phenomenal they're brilliant through the airbrush you can do so much with them um put a zenith on a model put a, put a tint layer over the top like and under light uh, but like they're, they're really good i think as a paint a lot of people when they first came out many years ago and it is surprising how many years ago it is now when they first came out but, um but uh a lot of people saw them for what you know for the marketing and what they were which is great for, for for you know for 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 timmy down the local shop that's just you know getting into it they're great to get models on the table and paint with they're phenomenal but i think they've got so many other virtues one of them being being used for the airbrush uh yeah i definitely definitely advocate and rate them i think they're they're really really good for all levels of painting no matter what you want to do whether you're just starting out and you're putting it on the model and getting it your miniatures painted and getting color on them or whether you're using the browns to do grime and streaks and rust on on tanks or, or, or using them as glazes or using them as boosters for colors or whatever like they they've got so many different things you can use them for so so yeah yeah quality yeah i i the only army i've used the contrast paints on is when i had to paint the whole harlequins army in a month um <laughs> yeah i basically booked a ticket to a tournament at hellstar wargaming i forgot to paint my army and i was like no no i didn't looked in the box oh they're all white oh no um yeah so that that did actually help and they actually look quality to be fair yeah. uh, they're some of my best painted miniatures and it was because of the airbrushes which is phenomenal yeah. um can you recommend any paintbrushes for people out there yeah sure so i'll always say this uh as a first as a caveat because i because obviously otherwise it looks really biased um so I, I used to be one of the owners of arthur sofas so i'm no longer an, art, an owner of Arthur sofas but um uh i sofa brushes I, I launched the company was involved with the business developed series s developed series m um and um and and obviously because i i, I birthed them with my, my two business partners at the time uh i'm always going to say them because i think they're great brushes uh however uh, i i use winsor newton i use Raphael, i use uh, many other manufacturers of brushes i think it's almost like Harry Potter, where he goes and chooses chooses his. his, his, his <laughs> it's the, the, the brush doesn't choose the painter, but what I'm trying to get at is that I think you have to try various different brush brands and brush sizes and brush head sizes and all these kind of things to to get the one that you feel confident with um, or feel happy with. I think confident maybe isn't the right word. I think um, picking up brushes, trying them, seeing how they feel in hand. Like for me personally one of the things with series s and series m is that i wanted a much thicker handle uh, and the reason for yeah. that is because uh just because when you're painting for six seven eight nine hours at a time and you're actually uh and you're actually um doing a lot of long sessions when you're using a thinner handle i personally find that i get a bit of cramp in my hand or that you know especially like you know you can get rsi because of repetitive strain where you're holding it so tight because it's small whatever so one of the integral things with series s is i wanted a more ergonomic handle um uh, and series m as well but uh but yeah like i think you need to just choose a manufacturer and choose a brush and try it i'd advocate pick one or brush, pick a size that you're that you're happy with um and you'll find that different companies have different brush head sizes as in like a triple zero from Raphael will be very different from a triple zero from windsor or ao or wherever like i think you need to i think you need to just try some brushes find one you're happy with um and then go with that brand um that's not yeah. to say in my in my like brushes that i use uh i've got windsor brushes that i use for certain things i've got uh, Raphael brushes that i use for certain things i've got broken toad brushes that i use for certain things um i have a whole variation of brushes that i use purely because each one individually is a tool that for a specific task um yeah. or for me like if i'm doing this technique or if i'm doing this thing i find this brush best for it in my opinion um that's not to say i can't do it with other brushes it's just i find that i've always got the best results by using this one because of x reason or whatever um so yeah any of those any just try some and then get one that you like i think it's the best way to do it yeah yeah completely um a few more things and then i think we need to wrap it up because no, i like no. to keep these uh very like commuter length just like either just around an hour yeah, um, so the last thing i know we mentioned contrast paints a few times then but can can you just 
from your experience when you like had to had to test them out and everything and everything and everything when you did your video what were, what were the like main benefits you can actually see from contrast paints i think um the saturation of color is really really important uh, like we all know that yellow has this stigma where it's like hard to paint um you know uh, and i think that because obviously brighter more saturated colors have the more dense pigmentation typically uh, they they can sometimes have a rougher finish the ability to just put bad moon yellow over something and it's yellow straight away is is like phenomenal i think that's one of the main virtues of it um the fact that the vast majority of the contrast range does what it says on the tin and adds contrast and shadow to things where it where it collects or it where it yeah. more pigmentation accumulates it has a more dense richer deeper color um i think that's a real advantage for for painters of all, of all levels more, probably more notably like, like like sort of newer painters because in that way they get that effect quite quickly by by minimal investment of, of brushwork or time because i can just put it on the model yeah. um so i think that contrast has always had that i think the new ones are even better at doing that i think that the coverage tends to be a bit better on them as well with the new range they've really worked the formula and the way that the paints work a lot better i know they've spent a lot of time behind that um i said it in the video and, and in case anyone who's watching this hasn't uh, hasn't watched the video on, on the siege channel i'd advocate watching it obviously it's a very biased thing to say but the reason why i'm saying it is because there's not a lot of people have spoken about the new uh white white scar spray can um i remember back in the day the skull white uh spray can being like a talcum powder in a, in a tin you know you'd throw it you put it on the model and sometimes you'd, you'd like you know you'd pray to the paint gods to make sure your model's smooth at the end of it you'd be out there with a hairdryer drying the heat in the can up and all these different things um to have a white spray that goes on so smoothly and goes on so well so quickly and so easily and that anyone can use you know uh, if you left it out in the snow for half an hour maybe not but um if, if you're if you're if you're just grabbing it off the shelf giving it a shake for a couple of minutes and then getting it on the model um paint that other color that is notorious for being one that people find very difficult or hard to get a smooth version of um is it's a great product that goes hand in hand with contrast they've released that can not, not notably obviously because it's a, it's a pure white spray can but secondly because it works so well with contrast and having such a vibrant bright canvas to then put the contrast colors on whether it's the old range or the new range yeah. um it uh it's just a phenomenal bedrock and foundation for the contrast to do their job um you know and as i said like the, this bad moon yellow this orc head glyph thing that i painted uh i don't know how well that's going to come up on camera but um oh. it, it literally like has hardly any shadow because bad moon doesn't typically leave that shadow effect on on the surface but for people who want to paint yellow really quickly it's a great product like just off the top of my head colors that i you know from the new lots uh, like uh mantis warrior green is phenomenal um the new orange i can't remember what it's called now and, then, and the new orange and the new yeah obviously bad yet yeah, imperial fist another yellow is great the dark version of yellow they're all really really well attuned to each other and they work really well um and i, I as i said if you if you've never used them i'll try contrast no bias you know uh like just just give them a go because you'll be so surprised at how good they are oh yeah yeah totally I, I can totally see the benefits from that and that yellow is vibrant that you can <laughs> really see that as well it's bright yeah yeah it's, but it's... No, your, your video on the contrast paints is phenomenal so every, everyone left like watching or listening to this please go check out cc's youtube channel because there is so many cool projects that they go on about and go watch the contrast one because they they literally go through how to paint a model with all and it's live in front of you and it looks insane it looks insane and the quality like i mean hands up you guys know how to actually paint the model um so you've got the expertise there but it's a it's a really good really good website to go to um so this is this is the end and this is where i where where you can basically speak to the audience and and tell them whatever you wish to tell them about C studio and any shout outs you want to you want to shout out to if you have any yeah, definitely um well look um you know uh if, if you've not heard of us uh, then check the website out it's just cstudios.co.uk or .com um there's loads of things on there to have a look at um we do loads of things as i mentioned in this in this sort of uh, podcast and chat obviously tuition classes uh obviously painting miniatures for you um if you do go to a convention that we're at 
drop by the stand, say hello. It's always nice to meet new people. Uh, have a look in the cabinets, see if you like what you see. Uh, and if you are interested in us doing something for you, then just just jump on the the relevant contact form. There's a couple on there. There's one for the just all inquiries, and then there's just another one for custom service. Um, have a look at those and, and drop us a message. Um, as for shout outs, I'll always say, you know, um, first things first is just to all our clients. If there's any of any of our clients watching, again, from all the team and, and myself, like the, the biggest thank you for for, for your projects and for the belief in the business and obviously for your for your custom um other shout outs obviously I, I can't not mention this to box because he's like you know <laughs> my brother from another mother um and obviously all the guys at tt striking scorpion uh dave mini wargaming all the guys that have been you know have believed in siege as a business and, and work with us on you know and allow us to paint beautiful projects for them like i just want to say a huge thank you and, and to anyone watching who hasn't um who hasn't obviously isn't aware of any of those channels um then then obviously go and have a look and, and uh, we've got them all linked on our website so when you go on there you can see all the affiliates and people we work with um click it for a, for a couple of seconds just give them a click and have a look at what they do um and i'm sure there'll be stuff on there you probably haven't maybe don't know one of them whatever um and finally dom just a, just a massive thank you to you for, for having me on like um you know i know i never thought all those years when i left st albans <laughs> to essex that we'd be speaking about toy soldiers on a podcast so you know all, all that you all that you'd, you'd, you'd see my band back in the day so yeah uh, that's, yeah. you know so, um, so yeah but i just want to say a big thank you for having me on and uh, as i always say like whenever i do one of these things like send me everything you need any links any social media assets logos whatever and I'll push the, the channel and, and, the, and this episode as far and wide as I can through all this, the socials that Siege has got. So just a big, big thank you. Oh, that's so nice of you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. No worries. And, yeah. So everyone, go, go, go look at Siege Studios. Go check out, check out the website, check out the YouTube channels, check out all the socials and uh, make sure you follow that follow them on, on on whatever platform it is and for everyone who is watched this on youtube please subscribe please leave a little like please give me some feedback in the, in the comments um i know i fumble my words quite a lot but it's just because i'm very passionate about what i want to speak to and my brain kind of works faster than my, my voice sometimes so um so uh, i hope you enjoyed this this is uh um, this has been a painting episode and we've, we've learned all about the different aspects of how to get better at painting what C Studios offers, and we've uh, we've had the the best in the business telling us everything we need to know. So um, if if you if you want to subscribe, please subscribe. Go check out the channel, and uh, thank you for coming on, James. Thanks very much, Don. Really appreciate it a lot. All right, see you later, guys. Bye.